Uh, very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, today we are here to uh, have a better understanding on ISO 21001, uh, which is uh, launched in 2018. And uh, recently there are many developments is in the process. And uh, in the coming one or two year, you will find the, the revision version of that one also. And uh, in 2018, when it was launched, it was taken by the government of India for NEP policy. And few of the clauses are uh, directly matching to the, those requirements for NEP. The topic uh, of the today uh, discussion is designing and delivering the educational services, ensuring quality and consistency in the teaching and learning method. Uh, we all know that a teacher, what, what he teaches, it, go, it goes to the everyone and reaches out to the, uh, everyone. Uh, the basic introduction for quality in the education. Earlier, the quality concept uh, uh, was mostly taken by the uh, industries only. But in the uh, 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 and in the industries, quality perception is fitness for the purpose. But here, the terms quality refers as quality uh, not achieved is the quality denied to the learner. If you are claiming that quality of in education context, providing that. That means you are denying to the services to the your aspirants and we have to take a uh, serious concern on that one that's why this uh, iso certification was uh, designed earlier most of the institutions were uh, recognized by iso 9001 which is a, a general management system now 21001 is a uh, specific to the educational institutions only the uh, today's uh, lecture having the basic objectives of providing the basic understandings of essential requirements for an educational organization then the how to establish and manage the quality within all the operations of an institution uh, with, uh, here i have used the word within all operations operations means how we are getting in the students in how we are delivering the classroom uh, uh, lecture deliveries then how we are going to evaluate uh, the COE department, the library department, the placement cell, each and every operations are covered under this one. Handling the special education needs, this is the, uh, one of the basic uh, need and uh, most from last past uh, three to five years in academy, in academia, when the NAC uh, was uh, proposed uh, since uh, uh, one, more than one decade, but then uh, most of the uh, emphasis of the institution on NAC accreditation was uh, since last uh, three five years and uh, during that five years the most of the institutions have uh, shown their more most of the focus on uh, the quality of the education and they also have a, a five to ten percent focus on uh, taking care of the special needs in the educational context the quality education providing a quality education hinges on both the design and delivery of the educational service these are the two pillars how you are going to design the services and how you are going to deliver if there is a gap in between the design and delivery then you are denying the service or you can say that you are some somewhere uh, creating a gap uh, or somewhere creating uh, most of the institution says that we are creating a uh, we are delivering a, a good services, but unfortunately they fail because they are not having the kind of resources to provide some, that kind of services. And the students who pass out from the, those institutions are not been able to get, get the job anywhere. That's why. And designing and delivering education services are the cornerstones of effective learning. We all know that uh, the design phase, the first phase is the design phase. It focus on creating a roadmap for learning and also create a blueprint that ensures students acquire the knowledge and the, uh, skills and institution aims to impart most of the institutions are designing the services but they are failing to deliver those services and this is a clear cut gap and this iso 21001 is uh, basically defined for uh, designed for uh, fulfilling the gap among the what you are what you are designing and how uh, but you are delivering it creates a balancing 
the key elements of designing an educational services uh, the first key element is understand your audience or you can say understand uh, to whom you are going to address or to whom you are going to provide the services you have to firstly understand whether the student is capable to take the admissions in your institution or not and uh, what kind of courses he or she wants and how we, and then you have to defining the learning objectives when you are designing any of the course you have to find out you have to design define that after doing this course what the students or what you are the uh, audience can learn from your uh, subjects uh, courses then the third one is curriculum development it is one of the most crucial and most uh, typical and uh, important aspect in the educational field and then the fourth one is assessment strategies most of the institutions fails i am giving you the uh, uh, gap area uh, showing, showing the gap area assessment strategy is one of the because curriculum development most of the institution can adopt the curriculum from the other institutions and they can find out the curriculum on the uh, uh, websites and other things they pick that one and they, they are claimed but the assessment strategies because it's a uh, ground level working and ground level working most of the institutions uh, do not provide that kind of resources to work on those strategies the next is delivery of educational service sis it is the art of bringing the learning experience to the student in a way that is both informative and engaging uh, before i think in uh, 2000 the student the teaching learning activity was more most of the engaging one students were engaged in classroom teaching because at that time there was no uh, mobile phone there was no any of the information media or either the student uh, will go to the uh, cl uh, classroom or they sit in the library to discuss on the all the topics but nowadays uh, each facility is available uh, industry i uh, your industry 4.0 the kind of uh, software the kind of you can say the digital sources they are available with the students so it is too difficult for an institution to engage but for the classroom delivery you have to engage them we you have to plan how to engage them in the classroom as well as outside the classroom creating a positive learning environment here you have to create a positive learning environment where the students can sit in the groups and they discuss about the uh, topics students can go for the teacher session then the third one is effective communication it is one of the biggest uh, you can say the hurdle because earlier the communications uh, there was a huge gap in between student and a teacher but nowadays <coughs> most of the institutions are also focusing on this one effective communication they are creating and the pools for the the students and under the vertical mentorship kind of things and uh, they are providing the effective communication then the fourth one is the learner assessment and feedback how you are going to assess the learner and how and on what questions you are getting the feedbacks uh, on what criteria you are getting the feedback from from a student about the, your course, about your faculties, about your facilities. That is also very important. The synergy between design and delivery work hand in hand. A well designed curriculum provides a solid foundation for effective delivery. Conversely, exceptional delivery can elevate even a well designed curriculum by making it engaging and impact, more impactful. A basic needs for creating synergy among design and delivery. What are the basic things we require? How we can uh, create the uh, synergy among design and delivery aspect. So the first thing is uh, teacher training and support. Earlier the teacher was very egoistic and uh, the kind of uh, uh, humble in the classroom, but the, uh, most of the time this they they, have, they were having the ego kind kind of ego clashing system and they don't want to uh, discuss about uh, uh, extra to the classroom studies but nowadays uh, we uh, because i have gone through many of the institutions i have many friends in the academic institutions and where, where i have seen that 
a lot of emphasis is given to the teacher training and support teacher training means uh, one but any of the criteria if the teacher feels ki i want to go for an entrepreneurship then the institutions is providing support to go for the training and uh, either from the online mode or offline mode that is totally dependent on the institution to institution then the another aspect is standardized delivery how we are going to deliver uh, standardize the delivery aspect for example in a class in uh, a class having more than one uh, 60 student in, means 120 student and the two teachers are are delivering the su same subject then either they are uh, delivering the, in the same way or in a different way because every teacher has their unique style to teach i know i know it's very well because uh, but there is some kind of uniqueness uh, the uniqueness have some kind of commonalities in because if a teacher is uh, in the class a providing the uh, notes for the students and teacher teacher b is not providing then the standardized kind of things and then the students are getting some kind of confusion and to avoid such kind of things because in present scenario everyone discuss very clearly and even notes are sent, uh, sent on the students uh, whatsapp students are forwarding those those whatsapp to the other groups and this kind of gaps you have to management at the top management has to address okay they have to ensure that how they can standardize the delivery aspect and even not even in the for the common subject but also for the uh, all the subjects in a class they have to standardize the delivery aspect then peer observations and feedback what are the peer feedbacks what are the observations uh, of the student of the uh, our stakeholders our uh, industry partners parents guardians everyone we have to consider then how we are going to uh, monitor these students and how we are getting this feedback from the student that is also very important and crucial uh, thing in designing and delivery because if the students are not uh, not uh, giving their inputs we are not uh, able to design any kind of services or we can say amend the any existing services because uh, in teaching line uh, then uh, if a student feels that he the uh, way to deliver the classroom uh, you can say the inputs is not up to the mark then the students can give the feedback and the uh, institute has to adopt those th strategies if the student feedback mechanism is uh, having a uh, hurdles or you can say the, the uh, institution is not going to address such things then it creates an uh, gap data driven decision making uh, this is one of the you can say in both industry and academia especially in indian context i am not uh, taking the uh, outside aspect most of the uh, decisions are taken by room only with a lack of the data with a lack of clarity on the data if uh, for 30 students we have to appoint one teacher for 60 students we have to appoint one teacher and uh, they are they are having the lack of the data, lack of clarity on the data, and they are taking the decision from the single room. And when the uh, problem occurs, for example, in a in an institution, I am not going to take the name of the institution. They have made a policy that if the student attendance is less than seventy five, we are not going to allow them to sit in the final exam. But out of seventy seven hundred students, more than hundred students are lying under the seventy five percent criteria. Then they have to change because earlier when they have planned with the clarity lack of clarity because, uh, because they uh, give the admission of the student uh, up to the uh, september or october and then they are asking the student those who are getting the admissions in the october they are uh, counting their attendance from the first of the september or first of the august when the semester has started this kind of things always creates an uh, you can say that uh, the problems or hurdles for the any institution then yes this is uh, 
we all know that technology integration during the covid it was the only one aspect uh, who you can say the work as a blood uh, as a blood in the body na that, that uh, similarly technology plays a very important role during the covid period most of the teachers lose their jobs because they are not aware with the technologies and how to use those technology but the institutions uh, who are very comfortable in their, uh, providing the technology support to their faculty members as well as the students they have taken the benefit for those uh, one and a half year then inclusive learning environment yes it is very important the environment should be uh, uh, eco friendly and uh, eco friendly not in the uh, term of uh, you can say the environment friendly but yes uh, each one can participate in any uh, any kind of activities and and this is a mutual learning concept then community engagement students should also be engaged in the community in the services uh, uh, you, uh, community services just for example student welfare scheme student welfare uh, some kind of ngos association some kind of uh, support uh, just uh, sports activities engagement we have to engage the student even a uh, institution can also provide the support for um, by organizing some kind of hackathons technical fest technical uh, social facts this is the commonality in all kind of educational system all education aims to meet the learner requirement utilize resources ensure all around uh, all around growth achieve objective ensure effectiveness and compliance and enhance performance this this is you all find uh, if i hope that you all are from the educational background and educational every educational institution have the same kind of this kind of uh, uh, you can see the scope or vision and mission statement that we are going to meet the learner requirement uh, up to their expectations and utilizing the resources in an efficient manner and sure all around growth not only in the academic field only we will provide them the the support facility we will provide them the facility for the innovation creativity each and everything you will find these are the these are the common uh, you can say the jargons in the uh, educational institutions and for those uh, jargons in organizations implement the process to ensure the education service meet the learner and legal requirements yes achieve consistency in product and services and enhance learner satisfaction these are the three basic aspects for the uh, the organization uh, can uh, integrate their processes for each process an education institution has to determine for these three operations then every every educational institution has to provide an educational uh, institution has to to determine the input and output uh, what are the input and how uh, it will uh, transform and what what is the output then sequence and interaction what is the sequence how the students enter in our btex course and how it will uh, go if, if we are for uh, claiming that the, the, uh, we are offering them five year or six year dual course then how we are going to enter and take the entrance of that student and then uh, how we are going to, to transfer that student after three or four year to the next level courses and what are the various criteria and methods of delivering that one who will be the responsible and uh, uh, who are the authorities to take the decision what kind of risk and opportunities during that six year courses because uh, if a student pick the course uh, in today's uh, yes, uh, to 2024 for example it if a student pick the course 2024 it and after four years if there is a uh, risk that uh, after four years if you will no, not find the, any of the job for uh, 2028 uh, due to any of the reason then how you can you can uh, uh, create a benchmark for the students uh, for, and how you, the institution can help the student to get the job and uh, or how the student uh, how the institution can support the student to take uh, uh, admission in further courses this kind of risk and opportunities we have to an institution has to determine then evaluate and implement changes what kind of uh, if and there is any change how 
the student uh, how the institution can implement those changes that is very important then improvement is well improvement is the next step firstly we have to establish in some of the sops based on those as sops we have to work, work and after work, working we have to evaluation and when we find that in evaluation if we are co comparing with the existing situation if we are at the uh, improving side then we have to further uh, made the changes if we are having the uh, performance lesser than the earlier one then you have to make the changes and then they take the decision it's a trial and uh, uh, trial and trial run then maintain and retain the documented information but so ever we have covered in a b c d e f g we have to maintain the record and also for uh futures uh references we have to retain those documented informations this is the introduction to the iso 202101 uh, it, it is known as educational operational uh, education uh, ums educational organization management system in the present scenario there is a critical and continuous need for the educational institution to evaluate the degree to which they meet the the requirement established by the learners and other interested parties to improve their ability to continue to do so here we have used the term in the point number eight ensure that the educational services meet learner and legal requirements in the earlier cases the students are only having the only one requirement when the nits are designed when the iits were designed the only the main aspect of the student was how to get admission at iit and get the degree but nowadays getting a degree is one of the aspect uh, uh, the parents and the students are also having their other objectives okay, during the those four years i have to spend when i have, I have to spend the, uh, at the institution i have to go for a sport meet i have to go i have to attend any of the hackathon i have to participate in any of the job job fair any i have to get the placement from the institution and even the uh, there is any facility for the startup this kind of different now the variety uh earlier the variety was not there and the quality was very higher but due to the variety variation in the variety or you can say the, the demands variation in the demands of the uh, the students and their, their parents as uh, organizations always try to put their resources uh, to fulfill all such demand but somewhere they lapse and the uh, this system will, will provide them to ensure that any of the lack area they, how they can overcome and how they can maintain that one then it is the first management system standard published for educational organization uh, it was prepared by ISO project committee, ISO PC 288. The standard is aligned with other international management system and frameworks. Yes, the, uh, you, if you, uh, uh, after going through this entire uh, PPT, you will find that in uh, this, the uh, headings of the uh, clauses are similar to the ISO 9001. There are very small, small changes in between ISO 9001 because ISO 9001 is a common management system for, for all kind of education, all kind of organization. Either it is for manufacturing or services, but it is uh, some. It is specific to the educational institution. Then ISO 21001 focus on the specific interaction between an educational institution, learner, and other interested party. Uh, this ISO standard is basically working on 11 principles. Uh, these are the 11 principles. The first one is a uh, focus on learner and other beneficiaries. Whosoever be the beneficiary, uh, we are seeking for, uh, we are to design the services and deliver the services according to that criteria. Then the visionary leadership. Visionary leadership is always uh, refers to the top management uh, who have a vision for uh, delivering the services and sustaining the institution uh, uh, reputation or you can say the consistency in kind of things uh, for the uh, institutional reputations then engagement of people yes every system wants that the number of is uh, in a organization thousand of people are working and 
only three four people are uh, engaging in uh, getting the uh, objectives then it is too difficult and uh, you can say the, uh, the the probability is negligible to get the uh, to achieve the targets the institution has to engage all the people then it is a process based approach um, here we are not uh, addressing the product based approach or a single subject or single single course or a single student it is a process based approach how the students can enter enter and how we are delivering and then after delivering the courses uh, uh, either the student is uh, uh, satisfied with our services or not we have to ensure that one it is a process based approach improvement when there is any of the kind of improvement we have to incorporate such improvement and this these improvements the small small improvements will help us to create a big uh, you can say the uh, brand brand in the mind of the consumers or you can say the, the student evidence based in decisions yes in an institution every decision is taken based on the evidences uh, we all know that uh, um, educational institutions covers the uh, any of uh, all kind of decision based on the evidences okay how uh, if we have to promote a student in the next semester see that, that the student has cleared all the existing uh, courses what grade and uh, how many credits he earned credit uh, based systems may how many credit he earns that kind of evidences we have we will uh, check and then we take that decision then a relationship management this is the collaborative kind of thing uh, this system mainly dependent on you know, having the dependency on the collaboration of uh, all the uh, or you can say the interaction among the departments if i am a teacher i am i am teaching i am teaching a subject and uh, there is another department uh, who is creating the evaluation kind of uh, papers for those so there is a uh, collaboration and there is a relationship between that one so that the students are not going to suffer with that your activities your uh, concerns then as so consider as a social responsibility accessibility and equity uh, in education we never uh, uh, you can say that discriminate the students based on their gender based on the kind of uh, family backgrounds these kind of things we have uh, we are always avoiding this uh, system this iso 21001 is also emphasized on equity and accessibility easily accessible to everyone and uh, have a equal participation of one and all then ethical conduct in the education ethical conduct means you are if, well, if you are uh, offering a full time degree that means a student has to come to your institution and attend all the classes and uh, and attend all kind of or you can say uh, participate in all kind of exams whatever with the institution organize and then these these are comes under the ethical conduct and if you are providing a student in a full time most of the same most of the institutions are nowadays offering uh, full time degrees to the sports quota players they are the players are playing in the in the ipl and they are providing the degree and full time this is not an ethical practices somewhere they have to avoid such practices because ethical conduct means you, you in your uh, statement to the legal authorities you have you show you have given a one liner that we are providing the full time degree those who attend our institution classes by 70% 5% in each semester and then uh, they have to appear in the exam and then we are uh, promoting them to the next semester and uh, a student who is playing for india or for playing for and you are giving them uh, degrees a full time degrees you can offer them the online degree or part time degree that that so seems to be ethical but when you are asking if we are going in the full time degree that means somewhere the ethicalities of the institution uh, then data security and protection it is one of the uh, nowadays you, everyone has a main concern on 
how my data is getting privatized uh, or secured and protected D data means because at the time of uh, admission students provide their uh, initial statements like uh, their uh, uh, parents income source what are the income source their income certificates in many uh, many academic institutions uh, take the student and student father uh, aadhar card and other ids and their dmcs and and, and many institutions keep the original document of the student how they are going to secure that one and how they are uh, prov uh, providing the protection for the student for those documents uh, so that the, the documents uh, never get misplaced that is very typical for the institution and this iso 21001 principle covers all these 11 11 its aspects Uh, starting from focusing on our learners and then the visionary leadership engagement of people process based approach improvement evidence based decision making uh, relationship management social responsibility accessibility and equity ethical conduct in education data security and protection the uh, this iso 21001 covers all these 11 aspects uh, yes uh, this iso standard is contributing to the sustainable development goal un sustainable development goal fourth is the quality of education 10 is the re reduce inequality and 11 is the sustainable cities and communities here you find the uh, focus on learner and uh, other beneficiaries this is the, uh, this is directly linked with uh, sdg number 4 then the next one is the reduce inequalities yes uh, point number 9 Point number nine, three, and two, four. These are uh, directly uh, covering the uh, UNSDG number ten, and then eleven. Eleven is the outcome of these. All these uh, uh, principles. This comes in the eleven sustainable cities and communities. When uh, because when we provide the right kind of education to the student, this will help in uh, developing the communities. and also developing the uh, infrastructure and sustainable cities so you can uh, sustain their services uh, this is the pdca cycle uh, this all the iso norm uh, iso certifications are having the 10 uh, clauses the first clause is uh, in the first clause is the scope of the your course and second is the terms and definitions uh, second is the uh, you can say the uh, terms and definition then informative annexures and normative uh, annexures and the fourth one is the uh, uh, management system for energy uh, your basic designing ka hai first three are the common in all the aspects Uh, where we you have to showcase the in, uh, about the educational institution and in, institution ka kya ho gaya hai then after fourth each and every aspect uh, each and every clause having the different kind of requirement in uh, iso 9001 14000 one is different 15 uh, 45000 one is different 51000 is different in fourth criteria uh, this is the fourth clause number fourth uh, clause number four always Uh, this okay uh, before that we have to uh, showcase the pdca the criteria is 6 uh, the clause number 6 is for the plan clause number 8 is operational uh, or you can say do uh, for clause number 9 is the check and clause number 10 is the act and in between fifth is the uh, common partner common uh, or you can say that uh, uh, one of the uh, leading channel for all these uh, criteria all these clauses and so as criteria 7 is the support and uh, we will uh, go through one by one for all these clauses clause number 4 is your basic understanding on the organization and it constructs here we have to identify the external and internal issues and also the who are the interested parties in for any for a educational system but who are the uh, interested parties a student be an in, interested party 
our stakeholders, uh, shareholders of the institution, the owners, the employees are also one of the the interested party because they have the interest to take uh, the uh, uh, wages based on their services. Student, you know, they have fees pay kiya, they, they have to take the uh, kind of uh, degrees and education. These are the interested parties. The first one is learner. Learner can tell me students and apprentice are the uh, interested parties. In uh, other beneficiaries, government, labor market, parent and gar guardian. These are also the beneficiaries of an in institution services. Then the staff in the staff volunteers as well as the employees. They are uh, they are also a part of interested party and in others the educational organization, the nearby organizations, or the backend supports the educational institution. For example, the AICT is also one of the interested party for your institution. If your institution is a technical, uh, if your institution is a kind of university, and then, then the UGC is one of the interested party from your institution. They are having the kind of, uh, they are always dependent on you, your uh, uh, database, and because UGC has to publicize that the database of all the universities on their platform that these universities are affiliated with us one and they are uh, offering such and such courses that is kind of interest then external providers media and society shareholders commercial partners and alumni uh, the criteria fifth number is uh, having the three sub clauses 5.1 2 and 3 the fun is the leadership and commitment where the top management has to showcase their, uh, their uh, to define the roles and responsibilities as well as uh, to uh, provide the uh, commitment and uh, how they have to and they have to demonstrate the leadership how they are going to uh, to support the students in getting their the expected inputs then uh, development of uh, yes 5.2 is the EMS policy EMS policy is one liner statement with which you are you are including how uh, the uh, services and you can also include the way you are going to deliver that services and up to which level you can also include then the how then you have to communicate that policy uh, how you are going to communicate to, to your employees to the uh, your existing student to the aspirants those who are looking for admission in or even the seeking admission from your institution then 5.3 the roles and responsibilities and their authorization if who is authorized for what kind of action you have to define clearly this is the only the, this is the work of the top management if the top management uh, having the uh, creating or you can say the, uh, the uh, creating or not providing this clear cutting information to each and uh, uh, each and everyone who is uh, having the interest in the institution then uh, it will affect the uh, accomplishment of all other four five six clauses a policy statement this is the EMS policy that is 5.2.1 uh, it supports uh, yes the when we are writing this policy statement we have to firstly ensure that the vision and uh, proper vision and the mission is stated and uh, this the policy must be aligned with that one then appropriate for the organization uh, for uh, in many institutions we have seen that uh, the institutions are cooperate their uh, policy with other institutions and they also include the words which are not uh, relevant with their services or you can say the courses offered by them that they have to check then provides framework for the objectives how they are going to frame their uh, objectives then they, it is also very important then commitment to satisfy all the requirement how uh, the top lead leadership or you can say the policy should be uh, in, in, in should be written in such a manner that it should uh, ensure it or you can say it ensure the commitment of the top management to satisfy all the requirements whatsoever were given by the uh, or you can say but but sir consider under the uh, uh, your okay, stakeholder requirements then uh, relevant educational developments commitment to satisfy social responsibility in policy statement some of the uh, uh, institutions also consider the uh, top, 
the environment and the other other aspects as they being a social considerations in then consider requirement to the interested party commitment to managing intellectual property it is also be there in policy statement then it is the planning phase and uh, the, the clause 6 uh, having the three sub clauses the risk and opportunity ems objective and planning of change uh, for every uh, in, uh, institution in every institution there are some kind of risk and there are some kind of opportunities and um, most of the institutions and uh, those who are established in uh, since 19, uh, 1995 or 2000 and now they are going to take the this kind of uh, you can say the certification they have not identified risk and opportunities yet this is the one of the uh, important aspect for every institution they have to identify the risk risk means care if they are using uh, the uh, table chair system table chair and chairs are made up of plastic product only then there is a risk of the of the student when chair get damaged and this plastic can harm the student skin or student work. then this is also one of the risks for example they hire a faculty without having any kind of degree and that, that faculty uh, submitted the uh, fake degree to the institution and uh, he is taking the classes and institutions has no idea ke what he is going to deliver to the classroom then this is also a risk and it is an effect of uncertainty we know that uh, it is uncertain that uh, uh, certainty though because when the constitution hire some people they always check the document but some kind of un uncertainty it is also there then opportunities arise because a situation favorable to the achieving an intended result a positive valuation arising from a risk can be an opportunity based on the organization construct risk and opportunities are determined on, as a basis for the planning uh, then the point number two is uh, objectives in most of the institutions uh, set their objective uh, the, in most of the you can say the uh, uh, they are not committed they are not showcased the commitment to to uh, uh, achieve the intended result and they are quality quality fiable quantifiable not a quantifiable one before setting the objectives we have to we have we can use any of the three uh, any of the approach from all these three the smart one the fast one or the clear one and the all objectives must be consistent with the policy that it it should be measurable one and it consider all kind of requirements and relevant to conformity of education system and also the relevant to the enhancement of satisfaction of learners how this learner satisfaction can be enhanced this is the uh, uh, very important aspect while designing and developing uh, the objectives of ums system and how the strategic plan here i have uh, this plan we i have submitted to an institution that uh, what what is the requirement what kind of resources you have to provide who is going to take the decision or to take the authority then when it is to be implemented and how you are going to evaluate all such kind of objectives then yeah, this is the so you can also easily find the answer and you can also convert the intended outcomes into a, your results and the objective uh, for this we also we have to communicate this objective to open and all it will be con continually monitor and it must be appropriated uh, updated as appropriate if you find so that there is some kind of updation required you you can't uh, delaying that one you you can uh, do it and uh, report to the all concerned because uh, if you see that if you want to increase the five percent placement level in the coming year and you have had two three new uh, placement uh, officers and they are working hard and in the third semester only third and fourth semester third means even 
even and odd semester uh, from july to december and uh, one semester is january to july uh, june so in in january to in july to december if you find that the the your uh, intended results jo bhi intended objective sa 5% ka tha if you have achieved by the end of december then you can also made amendment for the next 6 month because you never say you are not uh, going to say that the person three officers either you are fired or you, you can stop them because we have reasons in the next three months in the next six months we can also give them the another target or updated target when that when last time we have taken that when is the five percent now we can go for the seven to eight percent that means you have the uh, uh you have to take the uh lead for next three percent two three percent then these are the supports seventh criteria is no, uh, named as support here you have to uh, and from uh, pro provide this uh, support in terms of resources mainly four types of resources uh, manpower money um, ma machines and material in industrial aspect but in educational aspect kya hota hai basically the facility infrastructure is the resource uh, fa facilities mein aap usko uh, you are providing the teachers to uh, the kind of uh, access uh, access of internet facilities access of your uh, uh, the online notes facilities most of all the iims provides the, the uh, supports to the their institutional uh, faculty members to take the case studies from the uh, 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 harvard and other, other institutions because harvard harvard and the other institution what they do they put the uh, they they firstly go uh, work on the one case study and then then they put in, it on the, their website and from their website the uh, other institution buy that one and they, they allow that notes to the faculties and then the faculties are also working on that one and taking that one in, in iims it is most commonly used iim and iits i have not seen in the other private institutions then human resource is one of the uh, you can say the most of the uh, driver for uh, any in the indian context only i am asking about in indian context human resource if you are having a good human resources you can uh, showcase uh, you can uh, get the results as intended but if you are having the uh, lack of competitiveness or the lack of competence of the uh, or skill set among the human then the results you can uh, think of about that one environment for the educational improvement yes psychological and physical factors we are also considering that one ki uh, most earlier when we are we were in the classrooms we don't uh, have the kind of uh, uh, the mindset to to think about the classrooms uh, environment or you can say the classroom aesthetics or uh, internal benches but nowadays this these are creating a psychological factors where in most of the play schools you have seen that uh, something uh, the counting is written on the the counting is written on the chair, uh, stairs and that kind of things creates an uh, advantage for the students then the phys other physical factors and then monitoring and measurement of the sources how you are going to monitor those sources at other sources are useful it will be helpful for you in the next criteria number 7 then organizational uh, knowledge uh, what kind of uh, determine knowledge necessary for operations what are the resources and how what kind of uh, knowledge is required for those resources for example uh, uh, learning resources uh, yeah providing to the learning resources uh, reviewed and updated uh, based on requirements of and needs of the learners Uh, reviewed and updated at planned intervals catalog and reference uh, respect intellectual property requirements then this it is uh, related to the uh, faculties and staff competence then it is uh, the 7.4 is the communication one what to communicate why to communicate when to communicate whom to communicate how to communicate and who who will communicate that is uh, the one of the 
because most of the time uh, student parents uh, fall into the HOD directly. They never they miss uh, or, uh, the faculties are as calling to the students only. They are not communicating the, the actual positions to the uh, parents. To avoid such kind of things, uh, institution has to define key, uh, this communication one. Then this is the criteria number eight. It is come under the operational one. And uh, in the operational one, we have to uh, plan, implement and control processes needed under the as per class. Uh, clause 4.4 and 6.1 then specific planning and control to the learning outcomes comes teaching methods uh, learning assessment criteria and conducting we, uh, this we, you can also uh, identify from your uh, evaluating criteria how you are going to set the papers how much marks uh, how much you are giving to the uh, student for the ass uh, assignments for lecture classroom how you are uh, and what are the learning outcomes and how you are going to establish those learning outcomes. Uh, improvement methods, slow and fast learner kind of things and then support services, what are the supports you are providing to the student, extra classes, uh, the, the video lectures, the other things. Then requirements for an educational process, uh, product and services. These are the uh, requirements and eh? the first one is necessary one. The resulting from the need analysis, resulting from the international demand. Yes, whatsoever be the uh, requirements of the uh, of any of the educational product for a course, for specific, uh, if we consider the computer science. Nowadays, the international market need the specific engineers, those who are having the certificate from the Microsoft. That's why the institutions are going for the uh, collaboration with Microsoft uh, to avoid any of the delay for the student after getting their degree they, they get placement in those international or you can say uh, international uh, uh, organizations then these are also the recognitions then design and development of the product and uh, educational product and services it we uh, this we have already discussed in the first three slides then design and development of curriculum uh, how uh, what are the various criteria we consider under the curriculum design that is learning outcome on learning activities how they are going to learn then resources and adequate opportunities to learner uh, it we have to include then uh, design and development outputs karangi then meet in input requirements adequate if the does the curriculum is adequate or not uh, because most of the time we have seen that the, the syllabus is a very, uh, you can say, the complex one, and it uh, requires around one year to complete. But uh, most of the institutions are covered this one in the under the six. That's why the students, this is not meeting the criteria. Then it is very important. This is the admission of learners. If uh, this activity is divided into three stages, pre present and post pre means how we are going to uh, pre admission uh, information we are going to uh, provide to the student but uh, then learning output then approach participation of learner admission criteria and course this uh, this basically the admission brochure this should be designed uh, to fulfill these requirements for criteria number eight for clause number 8.51 then delivery of education Educational products and services, how we are going to take teaching, then facilitating, and then administrative support for learning. Administrative support may in covers means uh, your COI department, your registrar department, and the other uh, uh, DSWs. These are also the administrative supports for learnings. Then summative assessments, how you are assessing the students, method to detect for plagiarism and other male practices. Uh, copy cases hote hai, yaha, to usko, and summative assessments kis tarah prepare karna hai. then recognition karna hai. then traceability this is the production and transfer see uh, this criteria number eight uh, is very uh, because it comes under the plan, uh, uh, doing section or you can say the operational section it is a very big one and uh, covering all the operations related to the uh, uh, ground floor working of each and every uh, 
आपका जो डिवीजन ऑफ दी एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन यस रिलीज रिलीज ऑफ एन एजुकेशनल प्रोडक्ट एंड सर्विसेज ओनली आफ्टर प्लान ऑल प्लान अरेन्जमेंट है इंस्टीट्यूशन रिलीज देयर ब्रोशर्स इन द मंथ ऑफ जनवरी और फरवरी विदाउट एंड देयर ए आई सी टी अप्रूवल इज ड्यू इन द मंथ ऑफ इन जुलाई फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देवर गेट दी अथॉरिटी टू कंटिन्यू विद डेट वन देन इट क्रिएट्स and most of the institutions are doing such kind of uh, mistakes because without they are not going to apply they are uh, applying they know that their, their uh, aict approval is uh, going to be clo- uh, end by the month of may so they have to plan uh, around one year before that one so that they can uh, apply for that one and they, they will get the certification by the uh, before launching the their exact uh, your brochure but they already uh, launched the brochure and uh, when they lose they they are going to close the admission and they are calling the student those who have uh, taken the admission that please sir please change the, this one to this one because this course is closed by some of the reasons this is not this can not be uh, a ethical practice then it is comes under the monitoring measurement and analysis the coe part assessment learnings and the how Uh, feedback and monitoring this is comes under the, this one uh, in in this uh, criteria number 9 there are two uh, another aspect 9.2 and 9.3 which is internal audit internal audit is uh, in uh, an audit to verify uh, either, either all the processes are working as per the uh, planned or not if there is any kind of deviation that that must be uh, that must be communicated to the top management and uh, in the management review management review one of the top management uh, lead the lead the chair and take the meeting uh, on this all 10 clauses and also in uh, consider call the internal auditor sorry consider take the internal audit as a one of, uh, one of the agenda where we find that how many uh, clauses are uh, can confirm the requirement or how many are non conformative if there is any kind of non conformity then there should be a these are the uh, monitoring of satisfaction uh, yes yeah this i have already communicated we have to take the feedback how we are going to take the feedback and with then what we are doing with the feedback and uh, that comes under the analysis and evaluation okay in the criteria number 10 clause number 10 there are two things that first one is non conformity if there is any kind of non conformity then how we are going to mitigate uh, that non conformity or if there is any kind of non conformity into the conformity for, for that one we have to plan uh, the root cause analysis and then we, uh, we have to also define the corrective and preventive actions and the last step of this one is the 10.2 that is continual improvement after making so all the changes or you are you can say the all the processes evaluation and other things we have to uh, for example if this year we achieve uh, the uh, placement level of up to 2% then next year we can target it to 3% or uh, 2.5% that is the continual improvement the positive or you can say the potential benefit for iso 21001 implementation are the better alignment of objectives and activities with the policies and add social responsibility by providing inclusive and equitable uh, quality education for all more personalized learning and effective response to all the learners those with special education needs and distance learners consistent process and evaluation tool to demonstrate the increase effectiveness and efficiencies increase credibility of the educational institution yes once the, the educational institution are following because i have sh- shown one of the biggest case uh, they launch their their uh, brochure before getting the approval from the institution or they are they are using the uh, in most of the institution you have seen that the brochure is uh, uh, they 
launch the brochure in the month of january and they said that we are neck a grade and their next uh, term two is pending for example in uh, in the month of march and in that one if they fail to get the next certification neck b or next neck b or next certification and their certification and in, the, in their brochure it is written as neck a grade so there there must be a clash after getting the admission even the student get disturbed from because most of the, uh, nowadays <coughs> i have seen many of the requirements for the nits uh, nits also that uh, they are not going to uh, you can say the, oh, they are going to offer the direct phd the students of, from institutions with the uh, you can say the excellence uh, of uh, and I have a ranking less than 100 and something like that one. If an institution is writing that uh, we are in this year, we are having this much of rank. And uh, we are targeting. So we are targeting under the, the rank or this kind of things. This kind of mislead informations can create the, uh, you can say the uh, negative impact on the student side. So institution has to avoid. Uh, thank you very much. Is there any question?